Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to check the HEQ G port, a tray access gimbal which is going to enable you to stabilize your flight footage and control the orientation of your camera using your radio controller. In this quick video in which I'm going to check the O3 version of the HEQ gimbal, I'm going to go over the features and specs of the G port gimbal, show you how to set it up and show you some footage after mounting it on my RC car. First of all, in terms of packaging, here you can see everything that comes inside the box. Along with the HEQ G port gimbal, you are getting a quick start guide, a carbon fiber plate along with four rubber dampers that will enable you to connect it to the gimbal and soft mount the device, a bag with pretty small Phillips screws, a 15 cm long power cable, and 16 cm long PWM and SBUS cables. In terms of features and specs, the HEQ G port gimbal is available in two versions. The DJI O3 version comes with a MIPI cable, which is compatible obviously with the DJI O3 system pre inserted to the gimbal. So this end is going to be connected to the camera unit, and the other end is going to be connected to the air unit. And similarly, the DJI version is compatible with the first generation of the DJI digital system, which includes the Vista and Air units. Now, don't be confused. While MIPI cables look alike, they are not the same. So the DJI O3 version is going to be only compatible with the DJI O3 system. The DJI version is only compatible with the Vista and Air units. And in case you would like to use a Voxnel VTX, you should either talk first to HEQ in order to get a MIPI cable pre-insert to the gimbal, or you will need to disassemble the gimbal and insert the MIPI cable by yourself. Now, as I've mentioned earlier, this end is going to be connected to the O3 camera unit, and the camera unit is going to be mounted over here, and the other end is going to be connected to the O3 VTX unit, and the length of the exposed cable is about 14 centimeters. In order to install the camera unit inside the gimbal, first unscrew these four Phillips screws, and then you'll be able to install the camera unit inside this CNC metal part. Its inner width is 20.4 millimeters, and you will need to disassemble the O3 camera unit case in order to connect the MIP cable to the camera unit. After doing so, carefully disconnect the MIPI cable from the DJI O3 camera unit, insert the camera mount on the MIPI cable that is connected to the gimbal, insert the back cover that you just disassembled, connect the MIPI cable to the camera unit, secure the back cover, mount the camera using the provided small Phillips screws, and reconnect the camera mount to the gimbal. As for configuring and calibrating the gimbal, it is done using the Windows software, which you can find linked down below. After connecting the gimbal to your computer using the USB Type-C port, the port should be automatically detected, and after that, hit the open button. The next thing that you need to do is to follow the calibration procedure, and for that, you need to make sure that the gimbal is powered up externally, as the USB Type-C port is not going to provide enough power in order to power the motors. And after that, you should choose the camera setting. The default option is camera downward, which means that the gimbal is going to be mounted, for example, on the bottom of a quadcopter or a drone. And as I'm going to mount the camera on the top of my RC car, I've changed this setting to camera upward. In addition, this software is going to enable you to upgrade the firmware of the gimbal and configure the SBUS and PWM channel settings. Under SBUS channel setting, you'll be able to map the pitch, yo, and home to one of the 16 available SBUS channels. Under PWM channel setting, you'll be able to switch between the three channels. And by the way, don't forget to hit the right button in order to save the settings to the gimbal. In terms of features and specs, the G-Port gimbal features a USB Type-C port, which as I've just demonstrated, is used for updating the firmware of the gimbal and for configuring it. Next to it, you can find a two-pins plug, which is used for powering it up, 
the supported DC input voltage is between 8 to 24 volts, so you can power the gimbal directly with between 2 to 5S batteries. I don't suggest using a 6S battery as when it is fully charged, it is going to be over 24 volts and you are risking damaging the gimbal. Controlling the gimbal can be done using the SBUS port, which is located over here, using the PWM port, which is located over here. So each channel is going to control the yaw pitch and you have also another channel which is going to reset the gimbal to its center point. And these two UI ports are going to enable you to connect the gimbal to a flight controller, something that I'm not going to cover in this video. In addition, here you can see the specs of the gimbal angles. The roll is limited to 45 degrees on each side. The yaw goes between minus 135 degrees to plus 135 degrees, so you won't be able to look all the way behind you. And the pitch angle goes between minus 135 degrees to plus 45 degrees. In case the gimbal is going to be mounted in an upwards position, it means that you will be able to look all the way up, but your angle looking down is going to be limited. And it goes the other way around when the gimbal is mounted in a downwards position. In terms of weight, without the O3 camera unit, the G-Port gimbal weighs 67 grams, and including it, it weighs 77.2 grams. The carbon fiber plate and four rubber grommets will add 4.2 grams. And in this diagram, you can see the different dimensions of the carbon fiber mounting plate. Now I'm going to power up the gimbal using this 4S battery. The gimbal is connected to this Express LRS PWM ready receiver by Betaflight. It is connected to the PWM port. Now I'm going to power up the ready receiver. It is already bound to the ready controller. And now, as you can see, I am able to control the gimbal using the sticks of the ready controller. So I'm able to move the pitch and the O. And by toggling the switch, the gimbal resets to the center position. This is of course not the way that you are probably going to control the gimbal. The best option is to add a tracking model to your goggles and then you'll be able to move your head and look around. And I plan to get one of these tracking models pretty soon. And then I'm going to mount this gimbal on one of my RC airplanes and fly FPV in a very cool way. Now in terms of power consumption, when the gimbal is idle, the power consumption is very minimal and is very close to zero watts. And when I'm moving the gimbal around, the power consumption is a bit higher and it peaks at 1.5 watts. The next thing that I've done is to connect the DJI O3 unit to the G-Port gimbal. After that, I've mounted the gimbal along with the O3 system on my Gravedigger RC truck and headed for a test drive. As you can see, the Insta360 GoTo footage, which is by the way stabilized, shows that even when the ride was bumpy, the gimbal seems to stabilize the footage quite well, but in order to get the best in terms of stabilization, you should of course enable the Rocksteady option or stabilize the footage in post-processing using Gyroflow. You should note that while I was editing this footage, I got an email from HEQ UAV mentioning that they just released a new firmware for the gimbal and an updated configurator tool. The new firmware for the gimbal enables FPV mode, which locks the roll axis and allows you to set the angle speed of the yaw and pitch. This is definitely an important update for those of us who fly FPV and I plan to test it when my head tracker, which by the way was just cheap, will arrive. So in case you're looking for an out-of-the-box gimbal for an HD camera, you should consider the g -Pod gimbal as it seems to be well-built and easy to operate. Finally, I would like to mention that in case you are going to mount an HD VTX on your RC car, you should make sure to add an active cooling device, as even when it wasn't that hot outside, probably around 33 degrees Celsius, the O3 air unit overheated after a few minutes of driving, and on one occasion it even shut itself down. 
Anyway, that's going to do it for this video. As always, I wish you happy flying, and in this case, happy driving, and I will see you soon on my next videos. Goodbye.